Do you love your in-laws? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. In marriages, parents-in-law and children-in-law relationships are always the subject of jokes. Mothers-in-law are always the first target. Two men were in a pub. One says to his mate, My mother-in-law is an angel. His friend replies, You're lucky, mine is still alive. Fathers-in-law are depicted as ridiculously possessive of their daughters. Question, why would you rather deal with a vicious dog than your father-in-law? Answer, a vicious dog eventually lets go. One's feelings for children-in-law are a matter of perspective. Two old men are sitting on a bench. One says to the other, My daughter married the most wonderful man. He cooks, he cleans, and he gets the kids off to school. The other says, My son married the laziest woman. She makes him cook, clean, and get the kids off to school. Children-in-law can be mean. Question, What is the definition of mixed feelings? Answer, when your Maserati goes over a cliff with your mother-in-law in in it. These jokes live on because they encapsulate grains of truth. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus heals the sick mother-in-law of Peter, then called Simon. The reading says, they interceded with Jesus about her, perhaps referring to Peter and the disciples or his relatives. Today, we reflect on how married children should relate to their parents-in-law and vice versa. In-law relationships can be the happiest and most rewarding of relationships if both parties, the married couple and the parents of both, know their roles and limits in their relationship. But for many in-law relationships, it can become a big challenge, explode with toxic intensity, and even end up in broken marriages. Adam and Eve could have gotten good advice on the forbidden fruit if they had parents-in-law, but many marriages encounter challenges brought about by the meddling of parents-in-law and the encouragement of one or both of their married children for this to happen. Let us use the acronym INLAWS, in-laws, to guide us as we reflect on the smooth relationship of Peter and his mother-in-law. Smooth it is because when she was healed, She immediately arose to return the love by serving them. I, intercede to the Lord for your in-laws. Pray for holiness for yourself and your in-laws. God listens and acts on the sincere and loving prayer of an in-law for another. He changes both the situation and you. Prayer transforms your hatred into compassion, allowing you to become a loving person that will ultimately make your in-laws love you back. It may take time, but believe that Christ heals. N. Never confront your in-laws. When concerns or issues crop up, the principle to follow is for you to address your own parents. Do not confront your in-laws. Let your spouse do it, for any word you say in the heat of the moment may permanently cement the wall between you two. L. Look for common interests. Bonding moments are essential to building a lasting relationship. From sports to hobbies, from food to recreation, look for ways to enjoy things together. Spend time to visit one another regularly. The presence of grandchildren, for one, will always thaw ice-cold relationships and heal wounds. A. Abandon your expectations. Erase whatever expectations you have on what your in-laws should be or what they should do for you. They are like you, needing love and ready to give love. Accept them for who they are. They are a product of their past in much the same way as you. You cannot control their attitudes and behavior, but you can control your own attitude and behavior toward them. Always look for the good and the positive in them and dwell on these. Doing so will enhance your image of them and vice versa. W for watch your words and actions. Always speak in a respectful and loving manner to your in-laws. Look for ways to encourage, praise, and honor them. 
Do to them what you would like done to you. Be sensitive in giving advice. If not asked, don't give it. But if you need to give it, make sure you practice what you want to say with your spouse before saying it and pray for the grace of wisdom on your part and the grace of acceptance on their part. Apologize immediately for any off-tangent remark. We are all bound to commit mistakes and never tire of seeking forgiveness and giving it as well. In-laws are your pathways to holiness. S. Sweat not the small stuff. Let the small mistakes slide. Do not dwell on them or they will pile up. Ask for the grace so that you can forbear with your in-laws. Address the more important issues affecting your relationship rather than on counting and accumulating their infractions. Serve your in-laws. The more you serve and love your in-laws, the more your spouse will love you. For when you serve them, both you and your in-laws will learn to ignore the small irritations and annoyances caused by the other, as both of you are too busy and focused on loving and reciprocating love. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, make me a holy person, a holy spouse, a holy in-law, completely obedient to your commandment of love. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.